Welcome back, guys and gals. Welcome back. Happy Friday to you. We finally made it. We got a summer Friday here this morning. My name is Joseph James. Welcome back to our crude oil morning prep. We're going from the trading from the screens here in Los Angeles all the way to the trading floor in New York City every morning, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. My name is Joseph James. I run a live trade room every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Come out and see me Monday through Friday in our live trade room. We call live trades on crude, euro, gold, and Russell. We also offer a free trial on our website. Normally with me today, of course, Marty, my partner in crime, Marty Yerico from Traders Audio. Marty will be on vacation today. He'll be back to join us on Monday on Monday morning, right? Because I know you guys uh, I know you guys like to listen to him just probably more than you listen to me, right? But he and his partner, Jeffrey, they do a great job every morning, a live broadcast directly from the exchange on the NYMEX exchange. Check them out, 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. So once again, my name is Joseph. Welcome aboard today. My partner in crime, Marty Erico, on, on break here the last few days, and he'll be back to join us on Monday. My job today, I'm a technical analyst, which means I'm looking at charts. Not much of a fundamentals guy. I use just charts, right? I'm using technical analysis. And of course, today, I'm going to give you a top-down approach, meaning we're going to start at a slower time frame and work our way down all the way to a faster time frame. Specifically, I'm going to analyze what's happened the past few weeks, the past few days, the past few hours, and of course, specifically analyzing what's happened in the overnight trading session, right? the London trading session. I'm here trading in the US, so I'll be looking at the previous session to that, which is the London trading session. I'm going to anticipate direction at the open, right? I know that if I can anticipate direction based on a top-down approach and looking what's happened overnight, I can usually figure out what the direction is going to be today. And when I find that direction, it's very easy at that point to find those high percentage trading opportunities starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So the, my job is pretty simple this morning. Start with a slower time frame, work my way down to a faster time frame, try to find direction at the open, and then using support and resistance levels, I'm gonna talk about in just a few seconds, using those support and resistance levels, I'm going to look for those high percentage trading opportunities. We get a lot of great information here for you, and again, normally, Monday through Friday, I'll have my partner here with me, Marty Erico, and normally, he'll be talking about his pit analysis, of course, market direction, intermarket divergence, market internals, option prices, and those very important pit session trading levels. So check back with us on Monday morning at 7:30, and we'll have we'll welcome Marty back to the, back to the uh, trading floor. All right, you've heard enough about that today. Now you know the plan. Let's begin looking at some charts, and let's get our let's get our hands dirty here this morning. Get ready to make some money on crude oil futures. Now, first things first, like we always do every morning, we head on over to our crude oil blog. We've got all the charts posted for you guys here, as always. And I want to encourage you guys to sign up for the newsletter, encourage you guys to join the blog. And you can also grab a copy of, uh, of that blog on sidewaysmarkets.com. You can see there is a section called the Crude Oil Squawk and Prep. We've also got a morning prep page on the blog as well. You can see here we began speaking about the morning prep there. So take a look at Sideways Markets, and you'll see the link there directly for the Crude Oil Squawk blog. Taking a look over here at the news for today. This is very important because we want to remember what day of the week, what week of the month, what month of the year are we, right? Because that's going to give us some very big clues. What day of the week is it's Friday? It's the fourth week of the month, and the month is the month of August. What do we know about this information? Well, first of all, the month of August is notorious for being low volume, right? So the month of August is low volume. So we know that we're going to expect some low volume uh, price action today, right? In the month of August, the month of August is oftentimes uh, a trader's holiday. We know the last few weeks of the month, uh, uh, markets in Europe are very, very quiet. Markets in the U.S. here are, are about 30% lower volume than they will be uh, during the year. So we do know that this time of the year, specifically the last few weeks of the summer, right? The last two weeks of August, those first few days of September before Labor Day, we know the volume is going to be at its lowest. This is one of the most challenging times of the year. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Then, we look forward here, the fourth week of the month. 
what do we know about the fourth week of the month? Do we know anything about the, four, about the fourth week of the month? Is there anything important about the fourth week of the month? Well, the first week of the month has the first day of the month, right? The last week of the month, this is not the last week of the month because if you look closely here, we've got one, two, three, four, five Fridays in the month of August. So normally the fourth week of the month would have me talking about it's the end of the month. Expect the end of the month personality. Not the case though. So the fourth week of the month, as much as I like to uh, think it's important, it's not important. What's up next? Friday. Yeah, everybody likes to see that word Friday, right? We're here on a Friday morning. Now what do we know about a Friday? We know that a Friday is usually very, very, uh, well, unpredictable. Sometimes we have amazing Fridays, right, because you got that Hail Mary, end of the week, traders trying to get in and out of positions. Uh, maybe traders are way up on the week and, they're, and they're, 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 they're speculating. Maybe they're way down on the week and they're digging themselves out of a hole. We know Fridays have potential to really be a, a firecracker, right? They, they really can be. But at the same time, we also know that Fridays, just as much as we think they can be really explosive, uh, Fridays can also be sleepers, too. They really can. As you can imagine, uh, uh, when we throw in the summertime aspect of a Friday, right, when we start thinking about, wait a second, this is a summer Friday, now we start to think, well, it's probably less likely to be a firecracker, and it's more likely to be a sleeper. The reason we say that is, is because, well, my partner, Marty Erico, he's on vacation uh, uh, today and yesterday. Um, I've got neighbors on both sides of me here in my neighborhood that are on uh, camping trips this week with the kids before they go back to school. So we have, a, we have a feeling that before the kids go back to school, before the summertime finishes up, I've got a feeling we're going to get some people on vacation, right, taking a long weekend, taking the fact that we've only got a little bit of news here today as an excuse to get out of town for a long weekend or maybe just sleep in, right, and grab the surfboard instead of grabbing the uh, – the trading plan. So summer Friday, fourth week of August, we got to expect lower volume. We've got to be aware that today has the potential to be a firecracker, but most likely it's going to be a little bit sleepy. The term that I would use today would be consistently inconsistent. We know that every few hours we're going to get that great price action. Most likely today it will be right around, well, the major news we have. So now that we know the overall scenario that we're looking at today, we have Red Star News. Red Star News at 10 o'clock this morning means that we can expect to see the best price action in and around that time of the morning. Think about this for a second. We've had Red Star News throughout the week, right, Wednesday, Thursday, and then now here on Friday. Red Star News has resulted in some of the best price action we've seen this week. We know that Red Star News, being the most important market-moving news, will have the most traders participating. Traders from all over the world, all different experience levels, all different objectives and different markets they're trading will all be watching in on this same news event. That tells us that we should also be watching in, that self-fulfilling prophecy, what others are watching, we will watch. And so we will expect this morning, assuming that we don't have anything early, early, right, between 8 and 10 o'clock. Now, Fridays are usually weighted towards the earlier part of the session. So we know that on a Friday, you want to get in earlier rather than later, right? I'd rather take my trades earlier on a Friday, make my money, and get the heck out of here before the price action slows down after 10.45, 11 o'clock Eastern time. So expect to see some early opportunities on a Friday, but again, looking at this news report, it's pretty clear we got that new home sales at 10 o'clock. That should be where we get the best opportunities today. So words, you know, words of wisdom here this morning, be patient as we get started, but again, don't be surprised if we see some early morning price action. And if I had to speculate today, which I'll just go ahead and do for you, if I had to speculate here, I would say about 10.45 a.m. today, we're probably going to start seeing these, these markets really slow down. If it even goes that far, it may be 10.25, it may be 10.30. Um, we have to remember, summertime Friday, it's going to be in, it's going to be consistently inconsistent, and you know what's going to happen once this major news comes out. If it doesn't surprise anybody, traders will place their bets and then they'll hit the weekend. So just be aware: early morning price action, get in early, get out early. 
mark your mark your uh, alarm clock this morning, 10:45. I'll be watching it after 10:30, looking for that dead zone to step in, and we will expect to see price action slow down probably pretty considerably after 10:30. All right, guys. So be aware of that. Mark your calendar for 10 o'clock this morning. We've got your new home sales. Moving forward, moving forward. Good morning to you, DZ. Morning to your friend, Sesco. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming in and seeing us this morning. Happy Friday to you guys. All right, back in the action here now. We've got some charts to look at. Now that we know what the alarm clock will be for today, now take a look at this 30-minute VIP chart. Now, I like to use a 30-minute chart. This is one of the only time charts you'll see me using. And I like it because it gives me a little bit different look. It also gives me a chance to look at how time plays into this equation. It's really important because time is really important when it comes to trading, right? Elliott Wave saw it. Uh, Peter Stettelmeyer saw it, right? Market Profile. A uh, lot of, lot of trading theory uh, has, has kind of uh, uh, confirmed for us the value of looking at time and price. So we, look, we know that a time chart is of value. How long have we spent at this level? Right? not just what the price level is uh, at that time. The one thing that I see here, though, is, is this looks very bullish. This looks very bullish right now. Now, I might be wrong, but at first glance, it looks pretty bullish, and I've got three reasons why it looks bullish. The first reason is, is I want to zoom all the way out real quick. Zoom all the way out in this chart, and this is one of the reasons why I use a 30-minute. It's easy to zoom out a few, a, few, uh, a few weeks and see the big picture. See those trend lines that we drew here? Those trend lines on the 30-minute chart, now, again, you're going to have to zoom out here for about a month of data there. That's all the way back to August 1st. So you've got these trend lines we've drawn, and that's created this wedge. Now, I normally don't use this chart for that type of analysis, but this was just kind of an easy one this morning. And so I zoom back in now, and now we can see here, there's the top of that, of that wedge, right? There's the top of the wedge. So we can imagine now, most likely what's happening is, is that price is going to rotate off the lows. The second clue that I see is the previous high of day, 105.43. This previous high of day is really important, right? That previous high of day, if we get above the previous high of day, well, we have a wide open space here now all the way up to 106.97. 106.97 is the previous high of day from one, two, three days ago, right? So towards the beginning of the week. Remember, towards the end of the week, we tend to gravitate towards major price levels that we already have seen that week. Previous week's highs and lows, previous day's highs and previous day's lows. We know right away that there's a good chance that price action can go from the bottom all the way to the top of this wedge. That was the first clue. The second clue is, is that with the previous high of day at 105.43, members, you guys know this, above that previous high of day, right, we consider this to be bullish, and we are now buying all the way up. And we'll keep buying all the way up to that 106.97. We will buy pullbacks using our wave patterns as much as we'll get the opportunity to do so. The third clue that we see here is, is the trend line, right? This little trend line here, now this trend line was actually a really good example of how you can cheat a little bit and you can use the candlestick bodies as long as they line up with other candlestick or swing lows on the chart, right? If, if you zoom in on this on this 30-minute, uh, you'll notice that I, I cheated a little bit here. I used the trend line around the bodies of the candle because it lined up perfectly with the swing low from overnight. And so you can see that really does lend a little bit of, uh, of, of conviction here to these buyers. You can see now they're jumping up, and we should most likely be able to see that trend line continue to play in today. Now, this may change, obviously, because this is just a 30-minute chart. But at first glance, though, we look bullish on crude oil this morning. Now, again, that's just the first glance. Let's keep going. Okay, One of the great things about being a trader, right? you're just like a detective. Imagine yourself as a detective, right? You come in in the morning. Your job is to find out who done it, right? What direction are we going? I'm going to pick up clues all the way around the scene of the crime. I'm going to go to the front, the back. I'm going to go to the top, the bottom. I'm going to look all around crude oil. I'm going to find all the clues. And then once I have all the clues, then I'll make an educated decision 
as for who the uh, who the culprit was, right? So think of yourself as a detective, right? Every morning you come in and you're trying to find a bunch of clues, and then together we use those clues in our live trade room to find those high percentage trades and make money together, right? It's a pretty simple idea. Now here's a much different look at this market at this market right now, right? This is a very different look. Now you can still see that price wedge. Do you see it out there? Do you see that wedge? The price wedge on this chart, right, it comes off of the top of that channel and, of course, the trend line at the lows. So this price wedge, you can see, now is giving you very valuable information. So if we expect that price wants to keep rising, where will we start to see some sort of stalling out? Where will we see some sort of resistance? Well, I've got 105.73, 106.25, 107 even, and 107.44. Those will be my, my four profit targets going higher. Specifically, if we do move higher, I will look to buy long and take my profit at 105.73. I'll take a portion at 73. I'll take a portion at 25. And then I'll be looking to get back in long with a candlestick closing above 106.25. It's always the same scenario. As price moves higher, I'm buying. I will take profit at resistance. I will wait to see how the market reacts at resistance. If it reverses at resistance, I can choose to take a, a trend continuation trade back to the downside. But if price keeps going through resistance, I then will look for a wave pattern once I break that resistance because what is resistance also becomes support. So once we break through resistance, that, that resistance at 105.73 becomes support, and we can then buy up to 106.25 and right vice versa. Looking at this chart now, we can see the long-term trend is bearish. We can see the color of the cloud, right? The color of the cloud is red. So we know that right now, trying to go long is going to be against the long-term trend. However, it does look like that long-term trend is just about to change. So we may see that shift in trend direction, which remember, when we see the shift in trend direction, look what's happened in the past. Look every time we see the shift in direction. Shift in direction, big move. Shift in direction, big move. Shift in direction, yeah, big move. Shift in direction, big move. So you can see we do a very good job with this indicator package at anticipating the direction. But as you can see here, we are just about ready to make that turn, right, to now begin going back higher. As you can see, we're seeing those little subtle clues that a big run up here may be in store today. But will those clues continue to point to the bullish side? Let's take a look. As we go forward now, I move now down to a slightly faster time frame. Now, if you remember last night, I took my short on this last night at 105.24 right 10524 if you were watching our newsletter last night we talked about the specific trade short on crude oil in fact if you go back to sidewaysmarkets.com scroll down just a little bit here you'll see that we sent this out to our newsletter list last night where i talked about selling that 10524 wait you're not on the newsletter yet you got to join the newsletter to get all these updates there's the newsletter sign up form right there and again it's on sidewaysmarkets.com there's also a sign up form on the crude oil squawk blog right there for you right so join the newsletter and that way you'll get an email from me every time I make those trade calls right for crude euro Russell or gold moving forward here we've got the 105.24 resistance that's very easy to see 105.24 now notice here for a moment I took my short last night off those highs. I'm going to show you where the profit target was in just a few seconds, so hold on for that. But you'll notice here that we've got price testing the 105.24, bouncing down to the cloud, right, which I'll show you why we had a profit target there before. We go back up and try one more time. That second attempt, remember, if they, if they fail to go lower, that's their cue now to start going higher. Okay, remember that double top, right? Double top environment, two tests, 
They're going to try one more time, and that third time, boy, they just might get this thing to break. So we, we, we know that on this chart, right, this is kind of the middle anchor chart, we know that we've got major resistance at 105.24 to 105.64. That tells me that once we get above 105.64, once we get above 105.64, we have all the space we need now to go up to that 106.23 and 106.57. So in the short term, in the short term, we have to be very, very careful. If we do believe this price wants to go higher, we're going to have to wait to see really clear proof of that because we're sitting right at resistance. Now, notice here the long-term trend has already changed to being bullish. So now here we have a clue that we can use to feel, to feel confident that the trend is going to continue moving higher, but again, I can't predict that. I'm not going to buy directly into 105.24. The 30-minute chart, the major anchor charts, all of them are telling us we will probably try to go higher today. But again, it's a summertime Friday. I haven't seen what the actual personality is going to look like as we open here in the U.S. We know one thing's for sure. If the price collapses and goes lower, I will be selling short. Right? I will be selling short. There's no doubt about that. But again, if the price stalls out going lower and we start seeing those buyers start to poke away at the highs, we know this is coming, right? Don't, don't say I didn't warn you. So keep an eye on those sellers. If those sellers start to fail, if we start seeing some whippy price action, if we start reading tape, if we start using our wave patterns and they fail on us, it's going to be a good sign of that reversal and that price getting sucked right back higher. So I'm going to definitely be looking out for this bounce once, twice, and then whoop, right back up. But at the same time, I will be looking to sell short if these sellers do come back to us again this morning. Now, I talked about the short last night. And you may have been wondering, well, where do we take profit on this, right? Where do we take profit? Well, here's a bull channel we find on our entry chart time frames. Members, you guys know we use this very frequently in our, in our uh, live trade room. And, of course, we've, we've located trigger zone number one and trigger zone number two. And this was relatively easy here to find the perfect profit target at 104.79, right? Don't take my word for it. The price action doesn't lie. You can see a perfect profit target there at 104.79 for an easy short off that 105.25. All right, so a very good overnight trade on crude. Now here this morning, again, we have some more bullish clues here, a bull channel, a bullish short-term trend. But again, I can't buy into that 105.25. So we're stuck here right now. We know that we've got some resistance up here at 105.25. We know that we want to sell that resistance. So we have to be aware we don't want to buy into that resistance, but at the same time, we have this big bull channel. This bull channel tells us to buy at the lows. So in my humble opinion, the best plan today would be to wait for price or, if we can, get short down to the 104.79. We may not have the personality early this morning that we need. But once we get down to this area, then we can buy here once again. Now, if we buy at the 104.79 area, now that gives us plenty of room to take some profit targets before we get to 105.25. Right, so we're not just buying directly into that resistance. Right, I wouldn't want to buy right here because I'm going right into resistance. I don't want to bang my head against this wall, right, and then lose money when it bounces off of it. So what my job is going to be is to stay patient this morning, use this bull channel to get buying at 104.79, take some profit off before we get to that 105.25, leave a portion of the position if you can to run. Right? Try to leave a runner on that trade because you know, again, we've seen a lot of these bullish little hints from the market personality, from the candlesticks. Again, I think we could go anywhere today. It's a summertime Friday, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on short-term selling opportunities down to that 104.79, long-term buying opportunities. And again, be very aware of that 105.25 area that will be resistance overhead. Ideal locations for buying opportunities at 104.79 and at 104.42. So keep an eye on those levels as price falls this morning. 
Guys and gals, I want to thank you so much for an incredible week of trading here in our live trade room. I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining us each morning here at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, I've got a, I've got a little bit of a, of a request of you guys. I need your help. I'm always trying to make this broadcast better. Is there something you'd like to see me cover that I don't usually cover? Is there something here that you don't like, something you do like? I would love to know your feedback. How are you using this morning prep? Are you using this morning prep based on our, our, our video, based on the live broadcast? Are you using the charts that we post every day? Do you find value in those? What do you like? What do you dislike? And don't hold anything back, guys. I'd love to know how we can improve on this broadcast every single day. Don't forget also, I run a live trade room every morning at School of Trades starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And my partner in crime, my better looking half, Marty Yerico, him and his partner Jeffrey do a great job every morning at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time over on the NYMEX Exchange. All right, check out tradersaudio.com, check out schooltrade.com, and don't forget to shoot me an email if you want to get an invitation to next week's, uh, to next week's live broadcast or to send me any feedback. From the entire team here in Los Angeles, signing off for now. Have a great summertime Friday. Be careful out there. Don't forget to have a wonderful weekend. We've only got a few weekends in the summertime left here before we go into the fall. I'm excited to see you guys in the trade room today. Have a wonderful day out there. Keep in touch. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.